Good morning, everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost. And hey, guess what today is? Today is my new DigiKits reveal day. And also, along with today, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little envelope. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit different of a technique, um, but super fun and a great way to use up extra paper that you might have around. Okay, so first of all, um, this is funny, right? And, and I'm working on this uh, journal right now. It's not finished yet. I know, right? I know, it's like overstuffed already and you're saying it's not fair, you got too much stuff in there already. Okay, I haven't even begun to stuff this baby yet, but let me just put you aside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the DigiKits that are coming out for June 2022, and then I'm gonna show you some examples of how you can use them in your junk journals. Okay, so the DigiKits for June 2022. Where'd my little paper go? My little paper's gone. Where'd you go, little paper? Where'd you go? It's okay, I found you. Okay, the first one, Mother Earth Signature Pages. Okay, here comes Mother Earth Signature Pages. All right, these are Mother Earth Signature Pages. Let me just zoom these in a little bit so you can get a good look at these. Okay, so these are lighter, paler, softer pages um, I general, uh, so that you can fold them up and use them as your regular pages in your junk journal. You can still write across these to journal if you like, or you can use them as pretty background pages. You can also use them for anything else you like in junk journal making, as I will show you. Okay, so this, uh, uh, the signature pages, um, I recommend printing them out on regular printer uh, paper, copy paper. I use 20 pound uh, white copy paper to do that. I buy mine from Amazon. And um, so I printed them on the front and the back, different pictures on each side. And, um, but you can print them same picture on each side. It doesn't matter. Or you can just print them one sided. Totally up to you. But let me show you these. They're very, I would say there's a greenish theme to it, but um, most are uh, different levels of green. There's one page that's a little more green than the rest, but these are soft greens. Um, and if you're wondering what that is, that's a little dove in the corner there. Pretty tree. Um, here's some owls in a little forest nested area. So this is called Mother Earth. And there's the owls again, and this one has beautiful green imagery on the back. There's a deer here, big moon, some uh, animals flying in the background. Animals, I guess they're birds. Birds flying in the background. Well, I guess they fall under an, uh, Kingdom Animalia, I believe so. Um, so yes, you're going to see different images. So there's five unique images in a, in a kit um, for these uh, signature pages. So there you go. There's an old tree in the center, all framed around some, by some beautifulness. Um, so that is Mother's Earth, Mother Earth Signature DigiKit. So there you go. Lots of fun with that. Put you over there. Okay, the next one is called doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. Wings of Wonder. That's right. This is a combination butterfly and bird uh, DigiKit. And uh, these are larger pages. They have some beautiful, you can cut these out and fussy cut each one of these out if you like, or use them as a whole page. And uh, I'll show you how I used it in an example. Uh, but they're just gorgeous. These are very, very old images, beautifully illustrated, and certainly deserve to see the light of day again. Lots of butterflies. If you are a butterfly, um, bonanza addict, then this may be uh, the DigiKit for you. Now we have some beautiful exotic birds, probably from the Amazon rainforest, something like that, I would imagine. I did have the opportunity to go to the Amazon rainforest once. Um, we came time to go on a trip and we said like where we need to go somewhere we think we might never ever have the chance to go and we went to the Amazon rainforest. Stayed in a rainforest lodge and uh, that was magnificent. If you ever have the opportunity in life to go do that, I highly, highly recommend it. Amazing experience. And the cacophony of birds, the sound of birds in the, sm in the morning is so thunderous when those birds wake up, when the sunlight hits them, it is like a, um, the, it's like a tidal wave hits you. It's like, what? they all wake up at the same time and guess what? You're getting up too because nobody can sleep through that. <laughs> it's, it's quite a thing. Very fun, very, very fun. Okay, next one, this is a fun category. Um, this one is called Film Stars. Okay, one, two, three, but got them all, got them all, got them all, got them all, okay. Here we are. These are film stars. Betty Davis eyes. Yeah, so these are all beautiful images of famous um, film stars back in the day. 
Some are uh, movie theater posters, book posters, um, very classic uh, photos, um, some people that you will recognize just gorgeous images and we can have a lot of fun with those um, they certainly will bring back a lot of memories for a lot of people and maybe you saw some of these movies maybe you recognize some of these very famous film stars anybody anybody yes very beautiful very beautiful okay and this last one yes so a lot of fun to be had with these and Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, I lost my little name tag for that. I don't know where they go. It's like the earth eats them or something. Okay, what's one there? Okay, this, unicorns are real. That's right. This is the unicorns are real um, digikit. And these are very, very old uh, antique images, um, old illustrations from old books. They're just gorgeous. Hmm, I feel like I'm short of, oh yeah, here's a couple more. I thought so, I thought so. Um, or they are uh, uh, no copyright on these images. So there you go. But these, you can see there will be a, a unicorn in um, all these different pictures. Uh, somewhere along in days and times gone by, they were thinking about unicorns just like we think about unicorns. Very beautiful imagery and art. And remember, a unicorn could be other animals as well. It wasn't always just... Uh, a horse-like figure, but sometimes there uh, was a bird, uh, a whale-like creature, dolphin-like creature, um, and a ram. Okay, but uh, just gorgeous. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, the mysteries and the stories and the uh, mythology about the unicorns go back way back when. And uh, who doesn't love a unicorn, you know? I just think they're so beautiful. Um, just gorgeous animals. I think I fell in love with them originally. There was a movie, was it, was it Legend? Um, or there was two movies, like Legend and another movie similar to it, where there were unicorns walking around in this mist of cherry blossom trees, and I was just fascinated by them. Uh, Legend or... I don't know, oh, I'll try and think of it. But if you didn't fall in love with unicorns before that, you would after that movie, because they were just amazing. Okay, those are the unicorns. And then, bringing up the rear, we do have gorgeous, oh, there's the film store thing. Um, hummingbird Hollow, yes, yes, we have a beautiful array of hummingbird images here, actually, okay. And some are beautiful images, some are very famous um, antique or vintage uh, illustrations. These are very famous illustrations. Okay, and these are some very famous illustrations. Yes, there are little hummingbirds here. It's funny how people caught the hummingbird doing different things and how they presented them differently. So there's a lot of variety in this particular pack, uh, depending on what you want to use and how you want to use it. Uh, but hummingbirds have graced our planet and they're so gorgeous. We are fascinated by them. We love to feed them. We love to look at them. We are amazed at how they fly, how they helicopter like fly, breaking all uh, physics rules, but they do it anyway and we're just amazed. And I did put in a black and white uh, page on the back because sometimes it's really fun to use black and whites in junk journals because they can really pop against colorful pages or against a white page, something like that. It can look really cool for neutral themed uh, junk journals, but you're also going to get a black and white there. So let's get on to seeing these examples of how you can use these in a typical junk journal. If, is, I don't think the word typical junk journal is a real thing because there's no such thing as a typical junk journal. Okay, I want you, you're going to be very proud of me. I marked where I put examples. I know, I know, I'm, I've got my big girl pants on today. Okay, let's go to the first. This is mark is here. Oh, here we go. We have two things to show on this day. We have this little guy. This to you. This is just a fun thing to make, and um, you know, just trying to give you different ideas of different things you can make. Um, I cut out a piece of. I kept them together. This picture and this picture. I folded it, and then instead of putting a little booklet on the inside, I sewed a little. Um, a little uh, like a money envelope or a coin envelope on the inside and I did some stamping and put a little picture of a mushroom there and then on the back of the envelope I put a film star 
little bit of stamping just for fun. And then inside here, you can tuck whatever you like in these. Doesn't matter what you have. I happen to have a little beer label. How cute is that? And um, I also have this really amazing little tea card. How beautiful is that? Maybe that's what the little hummingbird likes. And then this little ticket from days gone by. Isn't that cool? Very cool. So you just never know what you're going to find in there. Um, and a fun way to hold your things together is with a little thin paper clip at the bottom if you if you're, uh, want to make it easy for the person to pull things out. Just paper clip them and tuck them in. That way they can pull them all out at once and they're, they're, it's easy. Um, it also yields a nice presentation. So there you go. That's just a little uh, booklet. Okay, now what else do we have? We have other things. We have other things, Pam. Show them, show them. Okay. Oh, yes, here we go. This is a cool thing. Okay, this is Wings of Wonder. Is that what it's called? Wings of Wonder. Okay, when you have 160 DigiKits, you sometimes forget the names. So, um, DigiKits are digital printables or printable downloads or instant downloads or computer files that you print at home or print on demand. I'm trying to use all these words because people call them different things, printable images, things like that. Um, I took the whole page and turned it into an envelope. Very easy to do. Um, and then I gave it a little sash. I, I hand uh, I made this twine myself out of some torn uh, material. That's a lot of fun. I have a video on that if I remember. I will, I will link it down below because uh, it's really fun to make your own twine if you have extra material around. And if you are a material collector, you know how that can build up really quickly. Um, okay, and then we open it. Did some rubber stamping up top. And um, inside of this beautiful little envelope. What did I tuck in here? Oh, I made... Uh, Remember I was making, I don't know if you remember, but um, I made some handmade coffee dyed paper with some stencils. I love making my own um, stationery, things like that. So it's very easy to do. And then using a, a washi tape that is on a roll, something like this, where the individual stickers are on a roll. I think I got these from AliExpress, if anybody's wondering. But um, remember, washi tape is low tack tape. So it makes a nice way to seal these. It almost works like a wax seal, but not being bumpy. And uh, there, so there's lots of place for somebody to write. They can write on either side. And uh, then it'll, it'll seal again. It's not a super strong seal, but it, it, will get, it will get you through a pinch. You know what I mean? And I thought it would be nice to marry that with an old airmail envelope because uh, it harkens back to olden days, olden times. Oh, apparently I stuck something else in here. Oh, I made a little tiny, um, um, this is just a little tiny glassine bag full of stamps and a ticket. So that's just, just like fun little extra things you can and tuck in here. Um, I thought it went with the uh, envelope letter paper writing theme to put a little uh, thing of uh, stamps from days gone by. Very fun to do. And uh, these are very easy to make. And we're going to do some play with some envelopes. Different than this, though. So uh, this one I did sew around. You don't have to sew these. You can just glue these on the side, fold it up. And uh, very pretty with these uh, full-page digi kits. Something fun to do. Very easy, very quick. Yes, I did use... Uh, this is Nouveau Drops and I believe, Copper Penny. I want to get that name right, but it's a copper color. And yeah, I did. I had fun doing that. Mm -hmm, I did. All right, so let me put this over here. I'll put you back in here so I can remember where I put you. Okay, and then we'll go on to the next one. What have we got? What have we got? Oh, look at this. We have two things here. First of all, we have a little envelope. And this is actually using a one-side printed Mother Earth signature page. So this is to Sally Sue Paper Pants at 127 Crocodile Lane, Scrap Town Earth. And there you go. Um, so I just put a stamp on here because I thought that was kind of fun. I put some rubber stamps in the corner and then inked around the edges to give a little bit of a, a aged look. And on this side, um, I just had some beautiful pictures from a field guide with some eggs. This is a sticker that I glued down and I made a little flap, opened it up, and then I'll take these out so you can see what the inside of the envelope. Do you ever see those envelopes that are decorated on the inside but plain on the outside? That's what you can use a signature page for if you have it printed on one side. So I made some very simple uh, junk journal car um, cards. So you can write on the backs of these, write on the fronts. More um, honoring of the egg and nature. I thought that went nicely with Mother Nature. And then on the inside is the color. So that's very pretty, right? So when they open this up, they see this beautiful color. Yeah. So that's another fun thing other than using the um, 
signature pages for actual signature pages, you can play. You can break the rules. You can go all over the place. Uh-huh, you can. All right. I told you to. All right. And I just clipped it on a page with a paper clip, a little decorated paper clip. i got to find the page. Okay, here. Now, this side, okay, is one of the unicorns. And it's a bigger picture, and you can do a lot of different things with the bigger pictures, but one thing you can do uh, is fat belly bands. So I just glued it down this side, glued it down this side, inked around it a little bit, and put this beautiful piece of very, very old um, ledger in here. And this one is dated, where is it? 1844. That's a very old piece. So um, I, th I thought it would just fit perfectly in here. You don't always have to stick the whole piece of a ledger in or you can use parts and pieces and use it in collage or just use it in uh, little separate areas to, to honor the piece that it was. It has a very unique feel to it, very interesting feel to it. And I thought somebody might like to explore that. Okay, so we are carrying on here. We're carrying on. Are we carrying on? Okay, here are the film stars, their first showing. These are two uh, signature pages that, so you can just see an example of how they're used as regular pages. They're already decorated. You can write on them or you can use this as a background and decorate from there. So what I did was I took three of the um, film star pictures and I sewed them together and then I made them into a side tuck. So they just work like that. That's how they work. I just put some fun things in here, tuck them in there and inside here I happen to tuck uh, this is a check from 1896. That's kind of fun, right? And um, this is Granite and Marble Cemetery Work a Specialty. This is a letter about uh, somebody ordering something, I believe, from, um, uh, you know, they're ordering the headstone or something like that for somebody. I believe that's what it's about. Um, you don't have to always use very old stuff in here. You can certainly make new stuff or make faux old stuff or use whatever floats your boat. Whatever is exciting to you, um, you can have fun doing. Um, all right, so, but if you do like the old papers, I do sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers to use in your junk journals. There you go. Um, so here is a flip up and this is one of the hummingbirds. Very easy to make. I just put a little paper trim here, a little uh, actual fabric trim here, and then this flips up. I made a very simple paper hinge. See how I did that? Paper hinge. I can show that on the video sometime, but very easy to do. And then I put down a piece of old stationery from a little uh, journal. This is a blue picture. I used some um, Aquarelle Stabilo pencil here to emphasize the holes instead of fight them amplify them and here's one of the clusters that we made the other day very fun very easy to use lots of writing space okay very fun things that you can do in your junk journals okay so here is a very simple idea this uh, film star has been turned into a corner upper tuck and I liked her eyes were looking to the right so I thought she was looking into the center of the junk journal and um, I thought that played well so I thought this would be a fun place to put some interesting things. I put the braille in here because it's very different than everything else. It has a busy background here. The braille is a, a very white neutral, but it has texture, so the contrast would um, pop there. And if you've never seen braille paper, this is very interesting. You do get that in some uh, fundals. Uh, you can, right now you get them in all fundals because they have a good supply. Okay, so here is a very interesting letter. Uh, I believe this is a 1920, and I think it's a 26 rue. France, Paris, or Frank in Paris. I think it's a letter from Paris. Um, it's an English letter, so, you know, you get to explore what on earth Henrietta was doing in Paris. Hmm, I wonder what she was up to, that little stinker. But uh, I think, what, what, breakfast at Tiffany? What, wasn't that in France? Maybe, maybe it was England. I don't know. I think it was France. I'm not sure. But it felt French, like a good place for a French letter to go. Now, here is also from Film Stars, and I made a u-shaped pocket and then i put a little cluster on it did a little bit of drawing on it ran around with a gel pen had some fun with that and then in here I, one of the film stars i turned into a little interesting notebook this book has no um i need to stick these in better i didn't do that well um interesting little thing i've got look at uh Powerball, um, old book pages, things like that. So just make sure when you sew these together, you catch them all. You got to double check. Okay. So what I did was I cut her out and then I cut the pages out to fit. I cut them all at the same time. So they magically fit. Then I sewed across. I should have sewed a little lower. So I caught everybody or I made sure everybody was north. And then I put a little trim and a couple little, uh, 
uh, blingy beads and this was actually on there already so that's kind of cool right and what else do we have in here oh i just put an um, embossed envelope this is a white on this side but inked up and pretty looking on that side. So I thought that was a nice little contrast with some stenciling and rubber stamping and just fun. You can just play on these pages and, and do what you will. Very fun, very fun. Okay, let's see, go to... Oh, oh right, I didn't show you these. Um, I, with the uh, hummingbirds, I made some page tabs. So if you stick them onto a page, there's a, um, one little row of hummingbirds that is tiny and they make the cutest little page tabs. I just uh, rubber stamped them on the back so there would be a visual interest there. Ink them around the edges and let me just show you them. Here's one here. Okay. And then where's it? There's one in every signature. Dooby dooby doo. Cannot find this one, dooby dooby doo. Don't know where it went, did not mark it on. Okay, we will just carry on. Here's another one. They just look really pretty even on plain pages. So if you want that distinction, just a little page flip, there you go. Um, okay, so let's carry on and we will look at what we made next. Oh, okay. So here, it, this is another envelope made from a signature page. This is Mother Earth signature page. This has the uh, print on the outside. So there was only one side that was printed. I used the flap um, as a way to anchor it to the page, but doing like that, okay? And then I just used this little decorated paper clip, which was super easy to make. I have a video on that if you want to see that. And um, just tack it on like that. Very easy, very simple, removable. And I just did some stamping, a little bit of inking, and then I put a really cool um, little a fall scene of a postcard in there. They fit nicely in these cute little envelopes. Very easy to use, very easy to make. And this, this is what I'm going to show you how to make, these little uh, one-sided signature page envelopes to give you a little variety of what you can do with them. Here is um, uh, the unicorns. These are the uh, unicorns are real, and I put a like a, a side uh, pocket. I glued it like this, like this, and like this. And then in here, I cut out three of the unicorn pictures and I angle placed them in here um, so they would uh, display a little bit differently. So I just wanted to show you different ways that you can display these. There is a baby unicorn in her hand. See that? Isn't that adorable? And this is a very, and oh, I also did different types of bows on top. The slip knot, the Boski one tie with a staple maneuver, looking like a pretzel. And this is just your basic tie on top. But these are all unicorn related and they can all very easily and very cutely present themselves like this on the angle, which I think is a great uh, uh, option. You know, we love our options. Okay, and then we're carrying on. Oh, there's more, oh, there's more, that's right. Um, maybe I glued everything together. That happens sometimes. Okay, so a very simple technique. A couple of the hummingbird pictures, which are so pretty, so beautiful for spring or summer. Um, corner tucks, that means two-sided glues. Um, they're both pointed in, so they're looking at each other and just looking for something contrasting to tuck in here. I only tuck things in on one side. Oh, are we glued down? That happens sometimes because I can't wait um, for it to dry. Um, but then I thought that might be fun. Oop, don't remove that. You need to know what's coming next. Um, I'm going to fill one side. I'm going to leave one side plain so the recipient has a place to tuck some things as well. And remember, if you receive a journal with a lot of things tucked into it, you can always remove a lot of those things. That will decompress your journal, giving you a flat um, book, and then you can write in it as a regular journal. But it's kind of fun to have these little surprises, like an explorer book. Oh, here's one more, a very simple concept again. This is just uh, an L-shaped corner tuck. Uh, subject is looking this way. Okay, we do have a subject looking that way, and that would be the unicorn. So it's a 50-50 toss. I just made this out of a... Uh, uh, it was a dragon book and I crumpled it up, inked it up and turned it into a fun little just explorative journal card, something interesting to read a little bit about your dragons. And I thought, well, unicorns and dragons, they might have been around at the same time. I don't know. I am not a historian and I'm sure they're all real. OK, I should probably do a dragons are real one as well. OK, so I just used um, some uh, medium size uh, Faber-Castell pencil, pencil, pen. It's an artist pen, do, do, do. Nothing fancy, but it just has a tip. It looks, it's about that big. 
and that'll give you streaks about that. So I just wanted to show you, you can do things. You don't always have to use um, supplemental things. You can use basic things that you have to decorate your book. Uh, okay, so, oh, and on top, I use the world's easiest um, junk, uh, journal card topper. I just uh, fan folded a little paper um, ribbon. Yeah, very fun. Okay, now, now we're going to make an envelope. All right, let's get Mother Earth over here. Okay, I don't, do I have any? No, I don't have any. Do I have any? Hold on. Okay, I'm back. All right, so apparently I do not have any one-sided um, Mother Earth signature pages, but you don't need them. Um, it, you can work with one-sided or two-sided, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's just, the basic concept. Um, this is uh, another way to make an envelope. It's very easy. No cutting is required from an eight and a half by 11 page. You can use, make this out of scrapbook paper, magazine paper, regular copy paper, a beautiful printed signature page like this, whatever you like. Okay, so here's the deal. All you do is that we're going to make a square first, okay? Uh, actually, I'm gonna go this way, okay. That's fine, that's fine, okay. Uh, so uh, the easiest way to make a squirrel, squirrel, we're gonna make a squirrel. Uh, take this end and you're gonna bring it up here until this little thing, you wanna, you see, I'm gonna bring it in closer. You can, this is the most important part. This little point, you wanna make sure that it folds exactly at the pointy point part, okay? Like that, yes. And then line it up here so it, oh, can't see, can't see. I know, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing everything. Hold on, Sally, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, a little more, small. Okay, so you, you line this up here and that gives you your magic square. Now we're not cutting off this extra piece, why? because I was feeling lazy that day. I didn't want to cut it off. Plus, I also wanted to see what happens if you just leave it there. Okay, now this particular one, I am going to fold this way. See, I turned it over. Let me back up a little more. Okay, so it was like this. I folded it up, I'm gonna turn it over, and I'm gonna take this flap, and I'm gonna fold it up until I can just barely see the paper underneath. So I don't want it hanging below the paper underneath, but I don't want it way high, just just to, to, Right there, okay, so you, I know you can't see. I don't, can you see that this is just the paper's right there, okay? So then we're gonna take this and, whoop, no, go back you up again. You guys are getting all close and personal. Take this little extra flapper and close it down. Now what you can do at this point is you can come along and just glue this little guy. There we go, we just glue you down. I'm gonna do a little glue with this. But okay, so now what you wanna do is you open it up. Okay, so now we have a square with a funny little flapperoonie. Okay, so you can do this a couple ways. We'll just do it this one way. I don't wanna confuse everybody. Okay, so you do your square. Okay, and let's go like this. We're gonna go like, eh. All right. Yeah, let's go like this. Okay, so this flap is on the bottom right. So bottom right, okay. So now, turn it over, okay. It, this is if you want little pockets on the outside. If you don't want little pockets on the outside, you're going to start this way with your pocket on the inside. But if you want little pockets on the outside, can I show you those again? Let me show you. Here's some examples, I was playing with these. Um, if you want a little pocket like that on the outside, okay, or a little pocket like that on the outside, it just depends where you put that little flap, okay. Uh, but if the flap is on the outside, and now it's gonna be on the bottom left because I turned it over. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold up about two thirds of the way. This is an eyeball shot. This is nothing fancy. We're just going two thirds of the way, okay? And now we're gonna turn this sideways and we're gonna take this little, this little point here and we're gonna bring it almost to the center where the spine, you need to come closer. Almost to the center where the spine is. Back up just a little bit, uh, but not quite over the spine, just to the spine, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch away from the spine, and then fold, okay? Turn this around, same thing, here we go, same thing, sixteenth of an inch away from the spine, and fold, okay. So now we have this, right? That's kind of cute already, right? Now we're gonna take this little piece, this little strange little bird flapper, and we're gonna put him down. We're gonna point him down towards the center, okay. All right, so now we have this union of three little pieces, and you could do a lot of fun things with that. I mean, this could open, you could open, never glue anything and leave it just uh, to be open so somebody can write on it, but we're gonna make a little envelope. Okay, so what you wanna do is come in with your glue at this point, 
And we're just going to, we're going to just glue these strange things here down because otherwise they're going to flap. All right. And you can glue down too. Okay. Now we're using an eight and a half by 11 paper. We're gluing all our little extras down. So everybody is down. Okay. Now we have that. Okay, so let's see what we have on the back. Oh, we have the little bottom corner tuck. That's how we got that. So that looks like this. Okay, that's there, if you want to use that, okay? Now, turn it back over. Now at the top, I would say, bring it to maybe a sixteenth of an inch above where these peak up here. Okay, just barely there, barely there. And line your um, pointy thing up with the center fold line here. Okay. Now, there. So now, oh, probably a little bit more. I'm never very good with doing these. Okay, okay, there we go. So now we have basic envelope. Doesn't look, it looks like an envelope. We didn't do any measuring. We didn't do any cutting. It just became an envelope and we got a pocket to boost. Okay, and you could do other things with pockets in here, but I'm just gonna let that rest. We can just let that rest. Now, an easy way to close your pocket, uh, not to close your pocket, uh, yes, actually, it is an easy way to close your pocket. What you can do is you can take a little cutie. Now, don't use a regular sticker. Why? Because they're too sticky. Um, you want to use um, a, like a, a washi tape, piece of washi tape. Or, these are like all stuck together. And what do we do when they're stuck together? We go over to the microwave and put them in for like three second bursts until the glue softens. And then you're up and running again. Okay, I have no idea what this is, but we'll try it. I think this one is more manageable. There we go. Okay, so I think, what is that? Is that a bird's nest? I don't know what that is. But it's really cute, whatever it is. But anyway, you can use a little piece of washi tape to close it for a junk journal. Okay, now obviously, if you're gonna mail it or something like that, I would really make sure everything is sealed down. You want, don't want anything catching in um, if you're actually gonna mail it. It's perfectly good quality paper to mail, but you just wanna make sure that all your edges are definitely glued down and you properly seal this together. Um, you could use a uh, double-sided tape or something like that or glue. Um, okay, so, but this is fun if you want the person to come in and out of it. That way they can, you can stuff fun things in it. And who doesn't want to stuff fun things in it, right? Okay, let me get some fun things. Oh, my kingdom for fun things. Did I show you this one? Okay, I'll show you this one in a second. I don't want to steal the fun things out of that, for gosh sakes. Boy, I'm not prepared here. Look at me go. Okay, here's some fun things. Here's a liar's license. Everybody needs one of those. You're allowed to have like three good fibs a year. That's it. And after that, you must seriously repent. Okay, here we go. This is a, an unknown thing in a different language. That can fit in there, can it? Will it fit? No, yes, it will. Look at that. So you can tuck a lot of fun little cute things in here. Here's a front page of a card of a hand-painted horse. We'll tuck you in there just because you were here. And there you go. And then you can ink these up and put them in your junk journals. Okay, how fun is that? Little, remember, don't forget your little back pocket. You can do some fun things with that. All right. So here's an example. You can use any paper. It doesn't have to be a signature page. This is an um, avocado dyed paper, but I wanted to show you an alternative for a flap. Now this one has the upper flap, and that's only because when I had my square, um, it was in the bottom right, the, the fold was in the bottom right, and then when I turned it over, it was in the bottom left. But if you, do, if you rotate it, you can have this little thing come at the top, okay? Um, trying to remember exactly how I did that. I'll try to figure that out again. Um, but here we go. Here's an alternative. If you don't have little cute washi tape stickers to use, you can, uh, this one I used one of the, um, uh, this is one of the hummingbird pictures. And I just inked it and I glued it in a U shape just long enough so that I could tuck the top in here. Okay, so very easy way to junk journal, uh, close without a paper clip, something cute, very easy to function uh, to make a little envelope full of treasures. So what in here did we put? Put a picture of mom. This is not my mom. This is somebody's mother. Mother. And uh, isn't she sweetie? Mother, in case anybody forgot. And then on the back we have mama mama. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's a beautiful picture of olden days. And then we have a beautiful hummingbird. Maybe mother loved hummingbirds. And uh, so that was uh, playing a little homage to mom. And uh, maybe uh, she was a nature lover. So we put in some things related to mushrooms. And then there's an old uh, Union Telegraph uh, company from, oh, this one's really old, 1857. A lot of telegraphs were going on back then. It's a little handwritten note. Um, 
from way back when just interesting uh, receipts from things. So you can put all sorts of fun things in envelopes that you can tuck a lot of things into them or just put one simple thing or make your own stationery. And um, a lot of different ways that you can um, work with envelopes and you don't have to have envelopes. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You can make your own very easily with an eight and a half and uh, by 11 sheet of paper. Um, so there you go. Let's take a quick peek at our digi kits again. We had Mother's Earth, very pretty. I'll back up a little bit for you. Okay, Mother's Earth. Just show you these again. Okay, and there's five sheets in all. And uh, here is Hummingbird. And we've got the barnstorming husband and puppy coming in the front door from the park. Um, are they? Yep, they're here. And okay, so there should be mayhem and uh, chaos occurring at any moment. Th this was hummingbirds. This is unicorns are real. Yes. And here comes the barnstorm. Hello, everybody. Hello, sunshine. Hello, papa. Hello, he says. <laughs> okay, that is unicorns are real. And then here, uh, film stars. Film stars. Very, very recognizable, beautiful faces. Film stars. That's right. Lovely images can be used in so many ways, trigger so many memories, uh, harken back to other days. And then here is Wings of Wonder, which is a combination of butterflies and birds in full pages. So if you like to play with full pages, you can also cut these out individually. Uh, you can cut across and use them as uh, pockets or tucks or um, bookmarks, things like that. Lots of fun. Um, so there you go. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed making the little envelope. There's a million and one ways to make an envelope and we will make them all. So <laughs> keep having fun. Keep exploring. Oh, if you haven't heard, golly me. If you haven't signed up for my free monthly email newsletter yet, make sure you do. Why? Why? Because you get a free digital image, a free uh, printable that you can print at home on your printer, print it out, use it any way you like in your artwork. And you also get a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. It comes in Word and PDF format. You can change the words, change the font, anything you like, or you can use it as is with my blessings. You're also going to get a list of junk journal supplies to keep your eyes open for as you traverse the world. It's seven or eight pages long. And also you get um, a page ideas list. So if you just don't know what to do with a blank junk journal page, you know, you're like, oh, I'm out of ideas. I got nothing. I got nothing. I have ideas for you. I have a list for you. And I also have a little playlist showing you how you can uh, make these things. And hello, sunshine bumble pants. You are all over the place. Oh, you are. Yeah, he's tearing around the house right now. He's got his little toy in his mouth. Uh, we'll see if we can catch him for a little, a little cameo. Sunmon, come here, come. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Hi. Oh, he's going to play keep away now. Yeah, because he wants me to chase him with his little bunny. Okay. Um, we'll see if we can catch him. All right. What else? We got um, fundals. I sell those in my Etsy shop. Um, those are collections of old and interesting papers, old book pages, hand-dyed papers, ledgers, um, receipts, checks, postcards, interesting categories like music, uh, dictionary pages, um, science category, foreign language category. You're going to find so many interesting things. 100 plus pieces, shipping included for one price. It's called a fundal and you can find it in my Etsy shop. That's fundal with an F as in Frank. <laughs> and um, uh, also in my Etsy shop, when I have them finished, uh, like this one will soon be finished. I don't know exactly when, but you know, it, you know, hey, we got to get to business here. Um, uh, I sell journals in my Etsy shop. I don't always make announcements. They might just surprise pop in there and they're for sale. Or I might do a big uh, announcement, a video, social media information, um, that type of thing. So um, just keep your ears and eyes open or just come over and check the so uh, shop out every once in a while. You may just find something sitting there with your name on it. Um, all right. And then also in my Etsy shop, you're going to find digi kits, the vintage print uh, digi kits, that, which are also known as instant downloads, printable digitals, printables, um, what you know, that kind of stuff. But basically, they're computer files. You uh, buy them. There, you get a receipt from Etsy. The links are on the bottom of the receipt. Or if you can't find them there, look in your Etsy account. They're eternally stored for you there. You can download them, save them, print them out as many times as you like, have fun with them and your artwork, um, and just have a blast. And also, um, uh, you can 
Uh, I also have a print and mail service. If you do not have a printer, um, I will print them out for you. I do them in batches of 10 DigiKits at a time. So I print them out on a nice lightweight cardstock. You would get in your package from me uh, for one price, 10 DigiKits, which equals 50 pages printed on lightweight cardstock and shipping is included in the price as well. So check that out in my Etsy shop. It's called the print and mail option or the print and mail DigiKits. And all I need from you is a list of your 10 DigiKit names. So purchase the option, the print and mail option, and then send me a list of 10 DigiKit names either through Etsy message or you can send the list to my email address, which is pam at thepaperoutpost.com, pam at thepaperoutpost.com. And I have an Amazon shop where if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies and goofy stuff like that you see me use here on the channel, um, you're going to find likely a link for it in there or at least a place for you to get started. It's an affiliate link. Um, you, I get paid a small commission if you purchase something there, but you do not get charged extra for purchasing through my link. So that's how that works. And thank you very much for your support for my shop. It really does help. And I also have a merchandise shop here. If you're looking for favorite, um, if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon, you can uh, get that on a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or a tote or something fun like that. An awesome gift for yourself or somebody else. And my, all of my links are in my subscription box down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. But most of all, where's my puppy? Puppy? Puppy of puppiness. Let me see if I can catch him. Hold on. Okay, apparently not. He is a fireball of energy. Mother has done three laps around the living room and I can't catch him. <laughs> So he will definitely uh, have something to say at the next video, I am sure. So we are all wishing you a blessed and happy day. Have fun. Create with reckless abandon. And remember, fun can be simple. Take care, everyone. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.